What's up bros, welcome to another BroGraph motion graphics tutorial. I am Matt Milstead, and today we're gonna be going over how to create repeatable patterns uh, for use in Cinema 4D. Um, a lot of the time, uh, sometimes you'll get these patterns that are just, uh, that don't actually have a repeat, and you can actually see it. Uh, uh, it's really obvious when you put your material onto your object uh, that it's it's got this harsh line. Now you can always use the, you know, the mirroring or the seamless List, but sometimes it just doesn't work out correctly. So what I'm going to show you to today is how to uh, uh, take like a texture or a material or say you've got something, for example, this lunchbox. I really like this lunchbox and I wanted to use this material from it, but you know, it makes it difficult. I could recreate it uh, or I could just go ahead and scan it in, which is what I did. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to create a repeatable pattern from an image. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right. So, <clears throat> um, I scanned in the image right here. And uh, as you can see, it's this awesome burlappy type stuff. And it's got an obvious repeat. Um, so, I need to grab a section of it uh, to make sure, uh, a section of it to repeat. Um, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the repeat and I'm going to line up all the lines. So, I'm going to try and match up this one and this little top right here. And then I'm going to match this top and this top. So, that's about where it repeats. So, let's go ahead and, and uh, I'm going to grab some little lines. Now, I'm working in Photoshop. Um, I know that's new. We're not working in cinema in order to do this, but we're going to be working in Photoshop. So, I'm just creating my little rulers right here. And I'm bringing them down to the top of there, to the top of there. So really, all we're going to need is this little section right here. Now, we've got to make sure that we've got this lined up because I scanned it in and I wasn't 100% straight. As you can see, uh, this point here doesn't match up to this point here and this point here. So let's go ahead and transform that. Oh, I've got to set my background. So let's transform that. And I'm going to go ahead and rotate this and get it all lined up. A little bit more rotation. Oh boy. A bit more, and then we'll move that. And that looks about good. Okay. So we've got that. Now, I, I did this earlier, and you can tell uh, that the, uh, the, now the, the design is lined up, but the burlap like the texture is not actually lined up. So that could cause us a problem in the future, but that's not a big deal. Uh, I was able to figure out how to do that, how to fix it. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take this section right here, uh, copy it, and then create a new uh, image and just paste that image in there. Now the, the coolest thing um, and the best way to uh, use Photoshop for creating these uh, repeatable files is what's called an offset. So if you go to filter other offset, what this does, let me go about 350 and about 350. <coughs> now what this does is it takes the left side and moves it over and takes whatever was on the right side and moves it over to the left side. And so basically, uh, you can see here, it is a seamless pattern. We get this pattern just fine, just from copying it. And you can see where the edge pixels are uh, repeating. So let me see if I, can, uh, if I can show you an example. So we'll start off with the horizontal. Oh, geez. No, that's all right. It was zero. <clears throat> so we'll just kind of move this a little bit at a, at a time. So you can see there's 10 pixels, we'll go 100 pixels, and see how it's just moving everything over to the right? Well, that's what the offset does. It takes everything that's on the right side, moves it over to the, to the left. So as long as we've got everything lined up within our previous image uh, that, we're, that we're grabbing, uh, all of this will work fine. So, and you can see, if, if, it, if it's a really clean image, um, and you can't tell where the seam is, you can hit this repeat edge pixels and that'll show you exactly where it's repeating. So you can see we kind of get this little line here and a line here of where it's repeating. So, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and do, let's hit cancel and I'm gonna do the half size of this. So let's see, pixels, 
Uh, so that's about 4, 54, 64, 70, 470, and 330. 470, 330, 470, 330. So 470 and 330. So that puts it about into the center. <clears throat> and then we'll hit OK. So uh, now if if you're okay with the way it looks, now I see a little bit of color difference. If you zoom out, you can kind of see the color difference here. And that's one thing with repeatable patterns. When these repeatable patterns show up, um, if, if you throw them onto an image or uh, uh, an object uh, and you've got these little tiny marks and stuff, they become really prominent when you're, uh, when you're repeating them across a large area. <coughs> um, so we're gonna go ahead and clean that up in Photoshop. And we're gonna kind of clean up these seams a little bit, even though they actually look pretty good. So um, I'm gonna create a new layer and uh, use my uh, my clone stamp tool, and I'm just going to clone stamp uh, an area over here to kind of get rid of that dark area. And we'll just kind of clone. Whoop! We'll just kind of clone stamp it out, and that's all right. Just make sure you line up your texture correctly. And then it should be fine. Uh, doo -doo -doo. There we go. All right, now let's zoom out. That looks pretty good. Now we got a little spot here that we could clean up, and then I think we're good to go. Now, say for example, you don't have a repeating pattern um, that's it's obvious where it's repeating. For example, say you take some wood or something like that. <clears throat> uh, let me just show you an example. So say for example, we've got this piece of wood, this uh, image of wood. Now, if we uh, threw an offset onto it, um, you can see it's not a perfect repeat, but what we can do is uh, we can go ahead and do the offset. We'll do about 600 by 600 maybe. Um, we see it about there. Now let's do the horizontal, maybe like 1200. See what that does. Okay, excellent. But now we've got the offset uh, uh, we've got the offset, you can, the, the image on the right connects perfectly to the image on the left, and the image at the top connects perfectly to the image at the bottom. <clears throat> the only thing that doesn't uh, connect perfectly is this line right here and this horizontal line right here. So once we clean up those lines, then we've got a perfect repeating pattern throughout. I'm going to go ahead and show you that real quick. Um, let's uh, move up our, whoops, Let's move our vertical a little bit, there we go, and then we'll move our horizontal a little bit more towards the center. <clears throat> okay, so I did that. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab the stamp tool, create a new layer, and uh, grab the, the stamp tool, and I'm just going to kind of clean up these in-between areas. Do -do -do, do -do -do, do -do -do. And you know, it takes a little bit of practice uh, using the clone stamp tool, especially if you haven't used it before. Um, if you have, um, it, 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 it becomes really easy and you know which parts you can clone stamp and which parts you can't. Um, <clears throat> so then we're gonna go ahead and clean up this edge. Now I'm just gonna keep, uh, uh, just skip ahead and, uh, or skip the video ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and start cleaning this up, but uh, uh, I'll show you once it's all finished. Okay, and there we go. <clears throat> so, real quick, it's cleaned up. As you can see, there's the before. There's with all the seams cleaned up. You can see right here, I went along and added a whole nother line. I just clone stamped a, a, one of the previous ones. Cleaned up uh, this seam right here. And so now, if we were to offset it again, just for example, you'll see, whoops, let's go ahead and copy the merged and paste. So it's shift command C to copy everything below it and uh, then just paste. So if I go ahead and offset that, you'll see no matter where I do this, it is a perfectly repeated image. And this is really good when you get something like this, like wood, you know, that is really hard to uh, uh, create a repeat from. Uh, being able to do this offset is fantastic. So let's go back to the other one. All right, so let's go ahead and save this. I'll save this as, 
uh, curtains texture. <clears throat> and then I've created this little scene in Cinema 4D, the little bay window and some curtains, and we're going to go ahead and throw the curtains onto the, uh, the, or throw the texture onto the curtains to make sure that they look good. So shader, I'm working in octane, uh, just because it's a little bit faster, well, quite a bit faster. <clears throat> so let's see, curtains, texture, <clears throat> and then we'll throw this texture onto our curtains. And then I'm just going to do change this to a cubic. And then let's make our splines a little bit thicker so that we can actually see if that's doing that. Oh, yeah, you can totally see that that's doing it. We just need to make it smaller. So we'll go cubic and let's do about 10 by 10. Oh, yeah, there we go. Maybe 15 by 15. There we go. Then when we grab our splines. Let's start with this one. You can see that is a perfectly repeating texture. Oh, nice. I've got it on the bar too. Let's just do it on the loft. And we'll do it on that loft as well. There you go. Looks pretty stinking good. Let's see what happens if we throw that to a UV mapping. There we go. That's much better. Yeah, now we've got the, we don't get the breaks like we do in the cubic. And then let's change our vertical length down a little bit. Maybe 2.25. There we go. Boom. That looks pretty dang good. You can see that perfectly repeating. You don't see any any seams at all. And let's see how this looks in our Octane Live Viewer window. <coughs> there you go. Perfectly repeating pattern of some uh, some uh, uh, an image that I scanned into the computer. So we went from this to the beautiful image right there. Um, so yeah, that's a simple way to create repeating patterns uh, for use in Cinema 4D. Um, make sure to hit us up on Facebook or Twitter or whatever, or check out our podcast um, that we Dave and I started doing uh, every uh, other week or so. So thank you guys for watching, bros. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Brograph.com, an online resource for learning critical components of Cinema 4D and After Effects, specifically catered to help you prevail as a motion graphic designer. What's up, bros? Welcome to another Brograph motion graphics tutorial. We give you professional time-saving tips, shortcuts, and lessons that help give you an edge over your fellow designers. Not only this, but our new Brograph talks help you in your file management, hardware configuration, and client relations. I love projects that scare me. When our art director comes to us and asks for something that I had never done before, man, it gets me pumped. Join us for live sessions, check out our crazy Cinema 4D experiments, or just watch our Fun with Brograph series, where we show you practical applications for techniques learned in previous tutorials. Do this from the beginning, and your client is going to respect that, and they're going to respect you, and they're going to respect your time. Subscribe today and get automatic updates on the latest tutorials, tricks, tips, and inspiration brought to you by industry professionals Dave Koss and Matt Milstead, all with a slight dash of dry humor peppered in. Real nice banana. Brograph.com, your source for tutorials that will help you thrive in the motion graphics industry. Don't just play around with Cinema 40 and After Effects, master it, and make money by becoming indispensable at your workplace. We don't care how you get here, folks, just get here! Subscribe now to Brograph Tutorials. It's pretty good, I guess.